My name is Kendall Griffin and I have ADHD and I am on the autism spectrum. So I always knew I was a little bit different from my peers. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was nine, I believe. Um, and I did not realize I was on the autism spectrum until I went to college. A time when I really felt that I was different from other people was for the first week of school, I, there was the big party where all the new students would meet each other. And I did not realize that it was a like black tie event where everyone's wearing suits and dresses. And I came with shorts and a crop top and a leather jacket and my black lipstick. And at first when I realized it was a black tie event, I was like, oh shoot, I don't wanna go. I'm gonna be made fun of this and I'm gonna look ridiculous. And the people in my suite were like, just go. You're dressed as yourself, you'll find your people. And I did and I went and I met my friend group which, who are still my best friends to this day, and my now boyfriend of two years. And if I hadn't been myself and expressed myself truly, I don't think I would have found them. And without them, I would have a significantly harder time taking the isolation from feeling like I'm not connecting with other people, other uh, people who aren't neurodivergent. Having people who support me and understand me really gets me through life. Um, having that support and that foundation is vital for me to feel okay. <laughs> I think an accomplishment I'm most proud of is getting into the theater program at my college because when I realized that I loved theater, I worked so hard to um, absorb as many skills as I could get what really inspired me to pursue theater was when I was in the Crucible, but I just felt so safe and accepted and supported and understood that I felt confident enough to be able to explore my acting and explore my character and not feel judged for it. And that ended up being my most successful and favorite show I ever did. I was in, at one point in five shows at once. I did 13 shows over the course of three years. And I worked so hard to get into theater programs at various colleges. And the Pepperdine one was the most difficult. And I got in and I am so proud of being able to do that and pulling that off out of sheer passion. I actually found that my neurodiversity was taken more seriously in college than in high school. I really like that there are accommodations that I can have actually implemented um, to make my life easier. I struggle with mostly sound. I wear noise canceling headphones a lot because there's already so many noises coming from my brain that all the outside noises are so much more distracting. When I am overwhelmed, having a sensory overload, um, I get very angry and very irritated, and I tend to like lash out because I'm so overwhelmed, there's so much happening, and it's painful, it's physically painful when there's so much sensory input because our brains can't process that the same way. And when I'm able to have like headphones and have the accommodations that make it easier and manageable, I, my mental health is at a lot better level than it would be if I didn't have those accommodations. I was able to take um, occasional mental health days off. I was able to have fidgets in class and be able to doodle on things and still be listening and not have a professor or teacher yell at me, tell me to put it away, um, tell me I was just faking it, like what happened in high school. Being able to be comfortably neurodivergent, relatively, um, was huge for me. It was like, oh my God, people actually care. This is amazing. <laughs> people who are neurodivergent can accomplish big things. When I have a hyperfixation, I love how passionate I'm able to get about it and how much like information I'm able to absorb about something I really care about and how many 
random skills that I now have because I got bored one day and found something interesting. I can sing a song in Gaelic now because I got bored one day. Um, and I think it's really cool the amount of skills and just information that we can absorb and retain when it's something that we really, really care about. I think that's amazing. Over the course of my life, I am now a lot more accepting and forgiving of myself when I'm struggling with something. I really love how much we're able to feel because I've been called sensitive my entire life because I feel things very, very deeply. But I think that's a strength and not a weakness to be able to fully love and understand and really feel what it means to be human. I've heard ADHD and autism referred to as being ridiculously human. We hear things and have sensory input, but more. We feel things, but more. And I think that scares a lot of people, how much we can feel and understand, but I see it as a beauty and a strength. There's this stereotype that only boys can be autistic. Boys with ADHD and boys with autism are diagnosed a lot earlier on, whereas because ADHD presents diff differently in everybody, but also in girls, and because of that, a lot of girls go through, a lot of autistic girls go through so much self-loathing and so many difficulties in life that could have been solved a lot easier and a lot more early on if they had just been properly diagnosed. Listen to your kids, show them love and understanding, because a lot of the times when we lash out, it's because we don't feel heard and we don't feel understood and we're really struggling with something, we're really struggling with that. And if you sit down and say, I know you're struggling, I'm not here to judge you, I'm not here to punish you, I just wanna understand and give you a helping hand if I can, that means the world. Not pushing us, telling us, you can do this, you just have to work a little harder than everyone else. You, why is this so difficult for you? Your brother was able to do it, why can't you do it? That does significantly more harm than good, considering I still remember those words being said to me like years later. Understand that it's not a problem, it's not something that needs to be eradicated, it's not something that should be made fun of, it's just a part of life. Some people's brains are wired differently. Really just showing compassion and love and understanding, even if you don't understand, it goes a really long way.